most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir to my house is Eliezer of Damascus. <clears throat> and Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall be your descendants. And he believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Say our psalm this morning in unison. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be confronted to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make the body, to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace to you and peace. Please be seated. Good morning. You already know this because you're all wiser than I am. Um, as, you, as you age, you, you, be, you begin to see how important relationships are in, in your life and for your own uh, sustenance, spiritual uh, and otherwise. So, um, as I have begun to figure that out in my young age, comparatively, uh, you, sometimes y'all got to wake up a little sooner. <laughs> A friend of mine called me a couple of weeks ago, and uh, a friend of mine who's a uh, dear friend, old friend, uh, 
30 some years now, friend, um, called me and had just gone through uh, uh, the dissolution of a relationship. Uh, he called me, hey man, I'm gonna be in Vegas. Uh, I'm doing a conference there. He's a budget analyst in North Carolina. <clears throat> um, can you come out and see me? I was like, absolutely. So I, I got some Southwest points and put them together and uh, I flew out on Thursday night to Vegas. It's Lent, you know, you gotta celebrate it correctly. <clears throat> So I, I went to Vegas and uh, met, with, met my friends, uh, stayed at this, um, this, this little cheap joint called the Wynn. It's not cheap. <laughs> Luckily, it was already taken care of. So uh, I, I was there, and on th this Friday morning, uh, I was sitting in this casino working on my sermon. <clears throat> Um, so your, your sermon this morning was prepared uh, at a casino in Vegas, um, or mo a, por a portion of it anyway. I'm sitting there, and uh, as, I, a as I'm doing, I'm preparing the sermon, I, I come across uh, this phrase uh, from Paul uh, to, to the Philippians, their God is the belly. And I was like, how appropriate is that to be in Vegas and to read those words? I got really judgmental right after that. It, it, it was, it, I began to think I'm in the right and these people were. Anyway, it, that's not part of our religion, by the way. I realized that a little bit later on that I was actually the wrong one. It's an interesting phrase, though, their God is the belly. Uh, Paul's when Paul uses that, what he's actually said, the root word for the word belly in Greek is hollow. So it's like saying, um, it's like saying they are full up to the brim of emptiness. It's fabulous, fabulous little turn of, turn of phrase. Um, so I, I was reading this and, 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 and I was feeling, um, you know, as I'm sitting there working on my scripture, that perhaps I, I, I was in a better place than many of these people who were leading this hollow existence. Um, of course, I haven't told you yet that I'd lost $100 at the five-card table lesson. Anyway, um, so I, I was right there with them. Um, th this, this, these feelings of judgment are, are not part of our religion, by the way. Um, I, I came to that on my own through, through some practice uh, with, with our world and beginning to think that one's better. It, it's very, a very illogical, at least in terms of our relationship with God, a very illogical conclusion to come to. And, and I, I began to think perhaps um, that I was just as much a part of what was going on there um, as any, anybody else. There's so many things like that in our, in our religious lives. I, I think about the Old Testament. I think about uh, what, how, we, how we think about God uh, growing up. Growing up, what, what I knew about God was taught to me in the church uh, as, as, if it were a, as if God were a fixed point of, of absoluteness. Um, God is, you, you know all, all, all these words, words uh, uh, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You've heard this, right? Descriptions uh, uh, of God. God is, is all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere, all at the same time. So God is this thing that is out there in the beyond, and it is just, that is what it is. And the problem with that is when you start to read Old Testament Scripture, it doesn't come out that way. Um, the thing in Old Testament Scripture that is most powerful is that God is always desiring always seeking a partner, always looking to solidify a relationship with humanity. And this is what you get this morning when we talk about Abram and Abram's worried that the promise that he will inhabit this land is going to be given to nobody because he doesn't have an heir. And what we find out later as God begins to speak to Abram is that, Abram, your, your spiritual offspring are too numerous to count. And, and that is us, by the way. We, we are Abram's, Abraham, Abram's spiritual offspring. We are fruits of the promise that we will inhabit a land flowing with milk and honey as, as it goes metaf metaphorically. So what you get when you read the Old Testament is, is um, a, a God whose first characteristic, his main characteristic is that he is relational. Not all those other things that we talk about. Those are things we develop later on. The, the initial thing about God is that God is in relationship with us. In, in the Old Testament, the, what they call, the word that they use for that relatedness is, is covenant. Covenant. Which is what he cuts um, with, with Abram. It's, it's, it's to cut a covenant was to make a sacrifice and divide, divide the animals as you heard and then for each, each to pass 
through um, between these pieces, and at that point, when it's, the agreement has been solidified, it has, it, it has been it's been cut. It's a, it's a to think about it in those in those terms that God has come to us and offered us a relationship and then sealed the deal for us so that we can begin to develop our faith in relationship with God. Most of us think that, oh, once we're faithful people, God comes to us and says, now you want to have a relationship. And it doesn't work that way at all. It doesn't work that way in humanity ever, really. The healing and the power and all the wonderful things that we gather in relationship start once the relationship has begun. It's, it's that way in therapeutic relationships. There's a wonderful book that's probably 10 years old now, um, A General Theory of, of Love. Uh, this is an aside, by the way, um, which talks about uh, the relationship between uh, a therapist and the counsel counselee. And, and what happens in that relationship is there is a great amount of healing over time. And, and it doesn't depend upon how skilled the counselor is. What it depends upon is the counselor's willingness to sit with another who is in pain and who is rebuilding a broken self. So the development of the relationship, the development of healing happens in that relationship over time. It's the same thing if you read much about addiction or you have addiction in your family or you know anybody who is, the same thing happens. We used to think with, the, with, with folks who were in addiction that what we needed to do was to draw a hard line so that they could come to their conclusions by us forcing them to. And it does not happen like that. What we do is we provide a space which is built on love and compassion for people to begin to want their own healing. And then, then it begins to happen. But you can't say, you know, you need to straighten your life out. That, does that work for you? So the point is, is that when we begin, <laughs> we begin um, the greatest development in our faith lives is once we realize that no matter where we are in our faith development, no matter what our doubts are, no matter what our anger is at God, no matter how grateful we are, no matter any of those things, all of that is happening within the covenant relationship, within the related, relatedness of God. It's in that realization that God will always, always honor the relationship that we begin to grow in faith. The biblical word for that is fidelity. God will not leave us hanging, ever, ever. So I'm sitting there in this casino, <laughs> um, and, and, and I don't know if you've been to Vegas. I'm, I'm sure all you good Christians don't ever go to Vegas, because why would you? Um, but uh, I'm sitting there, and Vegas has a certain um, aroma to it, if, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, part, it's part tobacco smoke and part uh, cheap perfume and cologne and, and part um, alcohol, I guess, and then just part, ugh, you know what I mean? And, and, and it begins, you sort of smell it when you get off play. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being judgmental. I'm just saying I've noticed it. You know, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm, I'm preparing these words um, in, in, in this, with this Vegas aroma or, 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 or around me. It, feel, it, feels, uh, it feels, I mean, it feels a little dirty. You, you know the feeling. Um, and, and I, be, I, be, I begin to, as I was thinking about this, um, a, a song came to mind. It's, it's one of my favorite songs of all time. It's, it's, it's called um, If I Ever Lose My Faith in You. Uh, it, it's written by pop artist Sting, which you've probably heard of. Um, uh, if you could say I, I, I lost my faith in, in science and progress. You can say I lost my faith in the church. You could say I lost my faith in, in the people on TV. The, or, or politicians, you could say, I lost my faith in everything. You could say all this and worse. But if I ever lose my faith in you, God, ultimately, 
our, li our lives are built on God's choosing us, on God's desire to be in relationship with us. Ultimately, our lives are built upon a God whose mercy and compassion and his desire to be with us are the single things, the singular thing on which we depend. Don't ever lose your faith in that. Everything else will be challenged. God will be there. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world God so loves, for peace among all nations, and for the reconciliation of all people and all things. In the name of Christ, saying, hear our prayer. For the poor, the hungry, and the neglected of the world, may their cries for help inspire works of compassion. God of love, in your mercy. For those who hunger and thirst for knowledge, may the light of wisdom be reflected in their lives. God of mercy, or God of love, in your mercy. For an end to divisions and inequalities that scar your image. God of love, in your mercy. For an end to maternal and child mortality and for the building up of healthy families. God of love, in your mercy. For an end to pandemic disease the plagues of death may lo no longer fuel poverty, destabilize nations, inhibit reconciliation and restoration. God of love, in your mercy. For an end to the waste and desecration of your creation, and that we may find sustenance in the fruits and the water of the earth. God of love, in your mercy. For those of us who enjoy the abundance of creation, and the blessings of prosperity. May our hearts be lifted to the needs of the poor and the afflicted. And may partnerships between rich and poor flourish and grow. God of love, in your mercy. <coughs> For the departed, particularly those who have died as a result of poverty, hunger, disease, violence, or hardness of the human heart, God of love, in your mercy. 
We remember today especially Judy, mother of Jill, Dr. Don, former parishioner, and Helen, aunt of Ardeth. We also pray for those in need in our community. For members of the U.S. Armed Forces and their families, especially Walter, Glenn, Nick, Doug, Michael, Alex, Mary, and Micah. For the unemployed, that they may be relieved of their anxiety in finding suitable and fulfilling employment and receiving just payment for their labor. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, remembering today the Anglican Church of Central America and their bishop, and we pray for the churches of Colorado, especially Grace Church in Buena Vista, St. Andrew's Church in Fort Lupton, St. Francis of Assisi in South Fork, St. John Christum Church in Golden, the northwestern region of our diocese and its mission Harrison Heidel, and Project Education South Sudan in Denver. Please join me in affirming our vision statement. The mission of St. Paul's Episcopal Church is to live out the love of God as seen in Jesus Christ. We will, with God's help, discover God's presence in word and sacrament, share God's word, nurture God's people, encourage congregational and personal growth on our shared journey, and act justly and peaceably. Direct us, O Lord, in all our with your most gracious favor. Further us with your continual help, that in our ended in you we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy, everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.